Gopi Jana Bala Ba Girid Baradhari Yashodanandana Braja Janaranjana Yashodanandana Braja Janaranjana Yamuna Tira Vanachari Yamuna 
जय राधा कुंज बिहारी जय राधमाधा कुंज बिहारी गोपी जान बाला गिरिद बरदारी गोपी जान बाला गिरिद बरदारी यशोद नंदान ब्रज जन रंजन यशोद नंदान ब्रज जन रंजन यमुन तेरा यामुन तेरा वन चारी हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा कृष्ण कृष्णा हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा कृष्ण कृष्णा हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा कृष्ण कृष्णा हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा कृष्ण कृष्णा हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे
Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Nitai Gor Hari Bo Hari Bo Hari Bo Nitai Gor Hari Bo Jai Jai Prabhu Pad Prabhu Pad Prabhu Pajai Srila Prabhu Pad Gaur Premanande Haribo Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Pustaya Bhutale Srimati Bhakti Vedanta Swami Namaste Sarasati Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya So we're continuing to recite this Brihad Bhagavat Amrita and we're hearing how Narada Muni is in search for the person who has received the greatest mercy from the Lord. So his search took him from Prayag. He went to the southern region to see the king there in the southern region. And then the king sent him to the heavenly planets to meet Indra. And then Indra sent him to meet Brahma. Each person was saying, no, no, I'm I'm not the greatest devotee. I'm insignificant in the eyes of the Lord. I didn't really get any great mercy from the Lord. Each of the devotees were saying, another person, you go to that other person. They get, they're the real devotees. They really got the mercy from the Lord. So in this way, Narada Muni was traveling and came to the planet of Lord Brahma. Of course, Brahma's planet is at the top of the universe, Satyaloka. And Narada Muni came there and he saw the Mahaparush is there. Mahaparush resides on Satyaloka. Lord Brahma requested the Mahaparush to come and live on his planet. So Narada Muni came to Sajaloka and he sees the Mahapurush and he sees all the offerings which are being made to him and all the prayers which are being recited to him. And this way, he, he, Narada Muni can see something of the opulence of the Sajaloka and how Lord Brahma is there and Lord Brahma is also enjoying the association of the Mahapurusha. Uh, okay, okay, so... Uh,
So the Mahapurusha is a form of Mahavishnu who resides there on Satyaloka. And he's there along with his consort. And they're accepting the offering and giving pleasure to all of the devotees, all the worshippers of the Lord. To enliven Lord Brahma, the Lord consumed all the items offered him, placing them into his thousand mouths with his thousand hands. So this is the form of the Mahapurusha. It's a thousand, a thousand heads and many, many arms, mouths also. So after rewarding the performers of the sacrifice, the benedictions he desired, the Mahapurush went to his sleeping quarters. As the goddess Lakshmi massaged his feet, he entered his pastime of sleep. So the Mahapurush we heard had two pastimes. One is that he of the Supreme Lord. So he waited until the Lord left and then he began to speak to Brahma. And also he didn't even offer his obeisances to Lord Brahma immediately because Although Lord Brahma is his father, the Supreme Lord is there. So in the presence of the Supreme Lord, it's not proper to show respect to someone else. This is a point of Vaishnava etiquette, that sometimes spiritual master may come into the temple room. So actually, in the presence of the Lord, we don't offer respect to the spiritual master. But Prabhupada used to allow it. Prabhupada never said anything about it. So devotees, they asked Prabhupada about this. They said, Prabhupada, do you know there's an etiquette and it's mentioned in the nectar of devotion that we shouldn't worship anybody in the presence of the Lord. But they said, we often do your Guru Puja in the presence of the deities. And Prabhupada said, yes, I said, that is just out of the mood of love, you're doing that. So I don't interfere. I, I allow it. He didn't mind. Because it's just out of spontaneous love. It's not that they're thinking that, oh, this rule, that rule, but just 
overwhelmed by pure love that we offer respect to the spiritual teacher or we worship Prabhupada. Anyway, here in Brihad, Narada Muni is there, Brahma is there, and the Mahapurusha is there. So Narada Muni is very conscious of how to respect each personality. And he wants to respect his father, but it's not proper in the presence of Mahavishnu. So he waited for Mahavishnu to retire to his room, to his own quarters. And then as soon as he did that, then Narada Muni came before his father and offered obeisances and began to inquire from him. So this is the point of etiquette here. So Narada asked to Lord Brahma, you have really received the mercy of the Lord. After all, you are the master of the universe. And you are the grandfather of all the world. So Narada Muni is glorifying Lord Brahma, right? He wants him to know what, how Narada is appreciating. He said, you alone create you maintain and you devour the 14 worlds. You forever rule the universe. You are known as the self-born. Of course, Swainbu and Brahma, we say Swainbu Brahma. Brahma appears from the lotus flower. So he's self-born. He doesn't have any mother. Hmm? We all have a mother. But Lord Brahma doesn't have any mother. He's the first person in the universe. He's born from the lotus flower. And here in this, this uh, verse, Narada Muni is saying that Brahma is responsible for the creation, the maintenance, and the destruction. Generally, we think Brahma is only involved in creation. But actually, Brahma is involved in all different phases of the creation. You could say he's involved in the, in the destruction because Lord Shiva is born from him. Lord Shiva comes from him. So in order for the destruction to take place, that Shiva has to take birth first. So the, therefore, Brahma is involved. And Brahma is also involved in the maintenance that he's in, engaged in the, in the service of the Lord. Just like when the world was overburdened with so many Kshatriya kings 5,000 years ago. So at that time, Mother Bhumi came to Lord Brahma to complain about the situation. And it was Lord Brahma who meditated on the Supreme Lord in Sweta Dweep. And the Lord communicated to Brahma that all the demigods should go and take birth in the Yadu dynasty and that he was also going to come. So you can see Brahma's involved. And similarly, Swayambhuva Manu, when he wanted to retire, uh, there was uh, the son of Swayambhuva Manu. Uh, we were just having the verse yesterday in the class. Uh, again, what's the name of the, the son of uh, the son of Swayambhuva Manu? Uh, Priyavrat. Priyavrat, right? Priyavrat. Thank you. So Priyavrat, he was off. He had gone away with Narada Muni to the mountains to do tapasya and austerity. And Narada Muni is a brahmachari. And Priyavrata was thinking also to be brahmachari. You know, why to become a ruler like Swayambhuva Manu? Why get involved in all the universal dealings and all that? Better just be with Narada Muni and be a brahmachari. So Priyavrata was thinking like that. 
but then uh, you, ha you have Narada Muni there, and Swami Bhuva Manus come there, and Swami Bhuva Manu said, no, you have to come home, I want to take Vanaprast, I want to go and retire in the forest, I have to prepare myself for giving up the body, you should become the ruler in my place, I want to go, <laughs> and Narada Muni is there, well, don't go, you get in Maya, go on, don't go back, don't go there to the material world, it's, you know, you'll suffer. And then Lord Brahma comes and Lord Brahma mediates for them. It's Lord Brahma who has to mediate. And so you can see Brahma helping so much in the universal affairs, different maintenance. And so, uh, Narada continues to glorify Lord Brahma. He says, you are present in your assembly, oh, present in your assembly of the Vedas, Puranas, and other scriptures. The, re the, the revealers of truth who were born from your four mouths. They're not able to hear. Oh. Uh -huh. So the coming from the mouths of Lord Brahma, the four Vedas are eternal, but they enter into the material world periodically at the beginning of each day of Brahma. So we know from Srimad Bhagavatam it says, Tenhe Brahma Rudai Adikabaye, that the, the Vedic knowledge was imparted into the heart of Lord Brahma. So uh, this Vedic knowledge, of course, is eternal. But as described here, every day of Brahma, at the beginning of the day of Brahma, the Vedic knowledge is imparted into Brahma's heart. Brahma, therefore, is not the author of the Vedas, but he is Adikabhaye. He's the first authority of Vedic knowledge in the universe. And so, of course, we're in the Brahma Sampradaya. Our Sampradaya comes from Lord Brahma. So he has a very important position in relation to our Sampradaya. And uh, Madhvacharya people, there, of course, our line also comes through Madhva. They took out the Brahma Vimohan Leela that when Lord Brahma comes and steals away the cows and so on, they don't like, they won't accept that Leela because they say he's the Adi Guru. He could not do anything like that. He couldn't do anything. So they, they don't like to hear that pastime. So Lord Brahma is the source of all of these different scriptures, the, like the personified Vedas, Kriti Charas, they also come from Lord Brahma. And later on, the Shruti Charas, they also go to Vrindavan and they want to take part in Rasa Leela because they want to understand the Lord. Because the, the Shruti, Chara, Shruti Charas, the Vedas personified. It's very difficult to know the Lord from the Vedas, right? Lord Brahma says, Vedeshu Durlabham. Very difficult to know the Lord simply from the Vedas. But Adurlabham Atma Bhakto is very easy from the devotees. So the Shruti Charas, they went to Vrindavan and they wanted to take part in Krishna's Rasa Leela so that they could know more, understand more of the loving affairs of Lord Krishna. But they couldn't do it until they first took birth in the family of the gopis. They had to take birth as cowherd girls. And only then they could take part in Rasalya. So that, that's one group of the gopis who are there in Rasalila. Different, they're different groups in Krishna's Rasa Leela. You have the sages from the Dandakaranya forest who also wanted to have an amorous relationship with Lord Rama. 
So Lord Rama told them, not in this incarnation, because I vowed only one wife, but in future, the next incarnation, you can come. So the sages from Danda Karanya, they, all, they also came and they also became born, they born in the family of the cowherd people, became gopis and took part in Rasadi. So all of these different scriptures, they all have personifications. And these personifications, they're, they're, they're on Satya Loka in the association of Lord Brahma. Narada continues, your world can be attained only by saintly persons. Brahma's planet, Satya Loka, very difficult to go there. In order to go there, they have to be saintly persons who faultlessly perform their prescribed duties for 100 lifetimes. They have to be free from pride and all other vices. They have to be really pure souls. They have to be very humble and then they have to be like that not one birth, 100 births. And then you can get to Brahmaloka. And even there, there's death. <laughs> even when you get to Satyaloka, you still have to worry about being in the material world. There's also annihilation there. So 100 births is perfect behavior without sin, strictly following the Vedic system and giving up all pride, then you get into Brahma Loka. So the, so the, the, the souls there on Brahma Loka are all very great souls. And to get that, sometimes we hear, you know, that we can also become Lord Brahma. But to get the position of Brahma, it's very rare. What's more likely is you become an associate of Lord Brahma on the planet of Brahma. But to actually get the position of being Lord Brahma, even in any universe, and there are many universes, but still, to get that position to be Lord Brahma, that's very rare. So when it talks that you can go to, you can get to Brahma Loka, doesn't mean you become Brahma, but you just become one of the associates of Lord Brahma. So Lord Brahma's planet is at the top of the universe and it's even, it's, it said it's even higher than Lord Narayan's own planet, which is within the material world. There's a spiritual planet, which is called Vaikuntha, which was created, is described in the eighth canto of Srimad Bhagavatam, that there's a planet called Vaikuntha which is there within the universe. It's a spiritual planet. But Lord, Lord Brahma's planet is higher than that. Lord Brahma's planet is really at the top of the universe. And Lord Narayan always resides in his manifest form as the Mahapurush. He eats his shares of sacrifice and grants the sacrificial results. In other words, the results of the sacrifice, they get what they wanted, what they were praying for. People do the yagyas, they have some, time, some kind of desire. And so in the course of the yagya, their desires will be fulfilled.
Then Narada Muni says, in the past, you made many attempts and were unable to find the Lord. But after performing austerities, you finally saw him for a moment in your heart. So the Supreme Lord, he gives birth to Brahma from his navel. But we know when Brahma was born from the lotus flower, he wanted to find out his sword. And he was searching. He was looking down the lotus flower, down the, the stem of the lotus. He couldn't find out his origin. He was unable to find out his origin. Then he had two two syllables, pa and pa. He heard the voice that he should do austerity and he began to do austerity. And after he did austerity for a long time, he sat in meditation for a long time, com completely controlling his mind and senses. And then the Lord became visible. So you can see Lord the Lord has special favor for Lord Brahma. It's even, it even describes how they shook hands. The Lord came and shook hands with Lord Brahma. He wanted to congratulate him on all of his austerity. That you have done very nice austerity, my dear son. And he shook hands with him. And Srila Prabhupada says there, he said, this means that in our universe, Lord Brahma is in Sakyaras, that he is a friend of the Lord. So different Brahmas, there are different Brahmas every universe, and, and they all have different rasas with Krishna. They're all different individuals. But in this particular universe, at this time, Lord Brahma is in Sakyaras the law. So the, the inhabitants of Satyaloka, they're there waiting for the end of Lord Brahma's life. At the end of the lifetime of Brahma, there will be the total annihilation. Throughout the life of Brahma, there's often some partial annihilation. The lower regions of the universe, even the heavenly planets, well, they, can, they will be annihilated. For example, at the end of Brahma's day, there's an annihilation. Every day of Brahma, but before the night begins, there will be a partial annihilation. And then when there's a change of Manus, change of ma Manu happens every 71 Divya Yugas. And there's 1,000 Divya Yugas in one day of Brahma. So every 71 Divya Yugas is a change of Manu. At that time also, there's a partial annihilation. But the Brahma Loka planet, that always remains until the end of the life of Brahma. That planet is not disturbed. So we know Brahma was looking for the Lord. He was looking for the Lord. He had to be satisfied with just hearing the Lord in the beginning. When he heard the words tapa, he understood this must be the Lord speaking to me. And he, he, he was satisfied and he followed the instruction. He took the words, when he heard these words tapa, he took these words that this is this is the Supreme Lord. He's speaking to me. Of course, it was the beginning. It was the beginning of the universe. There was no, there was no life. There were no living entities. Brahma had to do the creation. But when he, so when he heard the, that voice saying, Kapa, 
he understood this must be divine. This must be the Lord speaking to me. And he took it seriously and he did great austerities for a long time. And he did austerities so that he could get the power to do creation on behalf of the Lord. This is uh, what's required. Brahma's been given the order to do creation. And we see after Brahma, then he gives his, that order to his, his sons. People like Manu. Manu also got the instruction that you should do creation. The four Kumaras, Brahma wanted them also to do creation. Of course, they didn't want to do it. So the relationship, Brahma and the living entities, is like guru and disciple, or father and son. Just as it's the duty of the son to follow the order of the father, it's the duty of disciples to follow and to carry out the mission of the, father, of the guru. So here Brahma, he, he's, he wants to create, he wants to populate the universe. And in order to do that, he produces prajapatis. The prajapatis are meant to help in the mission of the Lord. Just like Prabhupada, Prabhupada was, he's the guru and he gives us the order, go preach. In other words, make devotees. Make devotees, right? I was hearing Devotee was telling me the other day, Jaipataka Swami Maharaj told him, make Bangalore the first Krishna conscious city. All right? This is, so the, in this mood, the devotees here in Bangalore are preaching and they're organizing. Of course, like Janmashtami coming up, they're organizing so many Janmashtami programs because they know it's difficult to move around Bangalore. People won't take trouble to come 20 kilometers just to come to temple. So make programs all over Bangalore. And then everybody can have the benefit of uh, worshipping Krishna at the time of Janmast. So this is the, the desire, the desire, the mission of the Lord. The mission of the Lord. Brahma is the first disciple. He's the first person in the universe. He has a duty to try to do something for the mission of the Lord. And then to pass on that instruction to give it to others also. So Brahma followed. He did penance. And after long meditation, he got a very short vision of the Lord. So Narada Muni says, because you saw the Lord, because the Lord appeared to you, you are the dearmost devotee of Krishna. Indeed, you are none other than Krishna himself, appearing in various bodies for your pastimes. This is what, Bra this is what Narada Muni is saying. And in the purport, Sanatana Goswami said, Brahma might object to being called Krishna himself. He might argue, the Lord is sitting right here in his Mahapurusha form with a thousand heads. Besides this form, he has countless others, but I am someone different. I'm a finite being with only four heads. Narada is therefore saying that among the Lord's intimate pastimes, Appearance among the Lord's intimate pastime appearance are the creator, maintainer, and destroyer of the material creation. Brahma, Vishnu, and Shiva, each of them non different from the original supreme person. <laughs> non different. One and, and different. They're one with the Supreme Lord, but at the same time different. <laughs> How to understand it? They're non-different from the original Supreme Person. 
but at the same time they're different, right? Brahma, Vishnu, and Shiva. One with the Lord, but at the same time a little different. So, Narada Muni is praising Lord Brahma and he's bowing before him with great devotion again and again. He begins to sing the glories of Brahma, just like he'd heard them from Indra. And now he's seen Brahma's glory with his own eye. He had seen how the Mahavishnu, the, the Mahapurusha is there and how he's being worshipped and how the Mahapurusha is accepting the offering. So Indra, he had told Narada Muni that Brahma is the very son. He's the direct son of Lord Vishnu, who's the husband of Lakshmi. So Narada knows from scriptures the glories of Brahma. And now he has actually seen them. Just like we know also the glory of Brahma, we know how he is that he's got this position in the universe. He's Pita Maha, he's the grandfather. He's the first living entity, and he's, has, he does the work, of the secondary part of creation. The first part of creation is done by the Mahapurusha himself, because Brahma also has to be created. So Brahma is created, he's the first person in the so that it's difficult for him. Sometimes people will glorify Brahma. They think he is God. They think because he's the first person, so he must have been God and everything came from him. And even Brahma sometimes becomes bewildered thinking like that. So he has to constantly check his mind and remind himself that he's not the Supreme Lord, that he's simply a tiny servant of the Lord. And sometimes we hear that we've also been Brahma in our, when you first come into the material world, it is said you take the position of Brahma. The first position you get is that of Brahma in the universe. We've come from the spiritual world, we've fallen into material world, you start off in the position of Brahma. And then you come down and down and down. And we go through different species of life. So the position of Brahma is very special. Among all the jivas, he is the most intelligent. He's Adikavaye, very learned, very intelligent. That's why all the personified Vedas and the, all the Shruti Charas and everything, they're all there with Lord Brahma on his planet. So Narada Muni is appreciating that Lord Brahma is a very, very special, very great soul. And he's thinking that definitely Lord Brahma has received the greatest mercy from the Lord. However, Brahma is going to refute this. He's not going to accept this praise of Narada Muni. And there are different reasons why. We will hear some of the reasons why uh, Brahma doesn't accept. It said actually when Brahma was hearing Narada Muni glorify him, Lord Brahma began to cover all his eight ears and eight eight eyes over and over again. And he would say with his four mouths, I am just a servant. I am just a servant. So with some effort, Brahma checked the anger which had awoken in him, hearing how Narada Muni was glorifying him.
He checked his anger just by hearing what no one should hear. Like Brahma didn't like to hear himself glorified. And he, he wanted to get angry, but because he's in the mode of passion, so it's easier for him to get angry. But still, he could check it. He could control his anger. So that is the position of Brahma, that just like when Brigamuni came there, Brigamuni was testing Brahma. At that time also, Brigamuni disrespected Brahma. But Lord Brahma didn't, he got angry, but still he controlled himself. So that's better than releasing your anger. You check the anger. It's one thing to get angry. It's another thing to use your anger and check your anger. So we have to restrain. We have to first check the anger. That's the mode of passion. If you come up to the mode of goodness, then you won't get, you won't get angry at all. In the mode of ignorance, the anger will manifest. You'll do things. You'll say things. There'll be activity. Just like Lord Shiva. Lord Shiva, when he got, gets angry, you know, he gets his trident and he's really, he's ready to really kill people. But Lord Brahma, he's the mode of passion, he's a little bit different, he controls the anger. He gets angry, but he can check it. So, uh, Brahminical culture, one should not make any claim. One should not make any claim unless it is upheld by the Vedas. So Brahma defends the evidence. Brahma demands that Narada Muni give some evidence. Right? That Narada Muni has come there and he's glorifying Lord Brahma like this. And so Brahma is not happy about that. So he's going to ask him. If I'm so great, give some evidence. Where's the proof that I've got the greatest mercy of the Lord? You're saying all of these things about me. How do I know you're not just ridiculing me, making a fool of me? So he asked Narada Muni like that. Where, where in the scriptures does this say? The Lord Brahma says... Uh, the personal energy of the Lord, Mahamaya, stands within his sight like a maid servant. It is she who deploys her material modes to create, maintain, and demolish the world. And this is stated also in the Brahma Samhita by Lord Brahma. Shristi stiti pralaya sadhana sakkareka jayeva yasya bhuvanani vibharti durkha echan rupam api yasya cha chaste teisa govindamadi pursam tamaham bhajam. The creating, maintaining, and annihilating deity of the mundane world is worshipped by all people as Durga. I adore the primeval Lord under whose will Durga conducts herself. So Durga, this potency of the Lord, is not independent. It's under the control of the Supreme Lord. And Narada Muni, he'd been glorifying Lord Brahma that you're doing all this creation, you did everything, you're maintaining the world, you destroy it, you are the Supreme Lord. And Brahma says, no, I don't do it. Now he says, it's all done by the Mahamaya, by the material nature, not by me. So Brahma is not going to accept all these proposals of Narada Muni. In the power of Raja Gun, Mahamaya creates. By Sattva Gun, she maintains 
and by tamagun she destroys. These are her potencies. And then Lord Brahma continues, all of us are subject to her and bewildered. So you should not think me the recipient of even a trace of Krishna's mercy. So everything is done by Mahamaya. All of us means even up to Lord Brahma and his sons, the people in the higher planets, the most intelligent people, they're also under her control. So we can imagine how powerful she is. Lord Brahma continues, by the power of Krishna's Maya, I am always deluded by various conceits. I think myself the controller, grandfather, spiritual master of the universe, proud of my birth from Krishna's lotus navel. I think myself a great aesthetic. It's great worship. I am overwhelmed by the countless duties of universal management, worrying about the imminent destruction of my planet. I live in terror of the all devouring end of time. All I want for myself is liberation. Lord Brahma is describing his condition, you see? Although he is Brahma, he's got a lot of responsibility. He has to take care of the universe. So constant anxiety, problems, they all come to Lord Brahma to help him. We have this problem, oh, there's this demon, oh, there's this disturbance. So... Uh, Narada, Narada Muni is hearing from Brahma why he has not got the greatest mercy of the Lord. Nar Brahma said, I'm constantly overwhelmed by work. And uh, I, I, he says, uh, I worry about the destruction of my planet. So Brahma's worried about death. He's living in fear. You see, even your so big position in the universe, but still you can be in fear. Your Brahma's in fear. What's going to happen? The end of my life. Where am I going to go? What will be my destiny? So it's, it's not that just because you're Lord Brahma that you go back to Godhead. Even the, the four Kumaras and the different demigods, they don't always get, they may be up in Satya Loka, but if they're not fully surrendered to the Lord, if they still have the independent mood, they enter into the body of Mahavishnu. They enter into the Mahapurusha, and then when the creation takes place, then they come out again. They take birth again. So sometimes Brahma has to take birth again. Sometimes even the four Kumaras who were doing their austerity, remaining children, remaining young boys, sometimes they also come back again in the universe. They, take, they go into the body of Mahavishnu and they have to remain there until the creation takes place again. So this is the position. Uh, Lord Brahma is not, not going to accept the words of Narada Muni. He said, no, 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 no. You've got it all wrong. I'm not doing anything. I didn't do the creation. It's all done by Krishna through Mahamaya. Krishna has his agents to do everything. You want to annihilate? You want to do create? Krishna, just like in the government or the king, 
The king has his ministers. He will, you do this, you do that, you go there. They give out the orders, you know, go and do things. So Brahma is one of the servants of the Lord. And he's got some duties, some responsibilities to do. He has to fulfill these duties. But he's not the supreme. Doesn't mean he's getting the greatest mercy. So Brahma says, because I want liberation, I always engage others in worshiping the Lord, and I also worship him myself. Because he's the Lord of the universe. So it's, the, it's our duty to do that. The Lord is everywhere. Is there any place where there's no Lord? No, God is everywhere in everything. So wherever, wherever we go, he's there. So Brahma is saying that he worships the Lord for liberation. Not, not for the sheer joy of devotional service. Brahma is saying he's not really pure devotee. He just worships the Lord in order to get liberation. So you should not regard this worship as a sign of his being favored. You said God resides on my planet, but this is nothing exceptional since the Lord of the universe lives inside and outside of everything. So the, the Lord is there within everything. It's not that he just comes to the planet of Lord Brahma. He's everywhere in everything. Narada Muni was saying, the Lord is here. He's personally on your planet. But Brahma says, well, the Lord is everywhere. Where is, he, where is the Lord not? He's everywhere in everything. Not just on my planet. Even when, when the Ashwatthama threw the weapon, the, the Brahmastra against the womb of Uttara, because the Lord is also in the womb of Uttara, so he could protect Uttara. He could protect the child. Because the Lord is everywhere in everything. And we see how the Lord also, when, when they wanted someone to come to pick up the planet from the bottom of the universe, Swambhu Vamana was complaining to Brahma, we have to do something. You want me to help you populate the universe, but the earth planet is in the bottom of the universe. We have to do something about that first. And at that time, the Lord came from the nostril of Brahma, came out of the nostril of Brahma. Now, usually the breathing of the Lord, that is the Vedas. But Lord, Lord Varaha comes out from the nostril of Brahma. So that is the personified Vedas. Lord Varaha is also personified Vedas because he came out from the breathing of Brahma. And then Narada Muni was saying, the Lord always accepts your offering. So Brahma says, he says, yeah, he accepts them from me only to promote the Vedic teaching and show special favor to the sacrifices themselves, which are dear to him, because he is their original creator. So it's not that the Lord accepts the offerings because he's so pleased with Brahma. But he does it to encourage the people, the ordinary people, the common people, 
that they should make offerings to the Lord, that this is the Vedic culture, that you should do this and that I'm accepting it. So the Lord is, is he, he wants the people that they should do these sacrifices. But it doesn't mean that the Lord has special affection to Brahma just because he's accepting these offerings every day. So Brahma said, that is nothing special. No, it's not, it's not just for me. He's not just showing me favor, but he wants to encourage everybody that they should do sacrifice. They should perform some, come, some kind of activity for the pleasure of the Lord. And so in this way, uh, Narada Muni is talking about how Lord Brahma has received the greatest mercy of the Lord. Okay, are there any questions? Anyone? We're hearing Narada Muni's search for the greatest mercy of the Lord. So he's traveling up to the highest planet in the universe. And from Lord Brahma, he's going to go on. He's going to go through the universe into the spiritual sky, searching for who has received the greatest mercy. We will hear how he goes from Brahma. Then he will go to, uh, he will go to, We'll hear about Prahlad, and then we'll hear about Hanuman, and the Hanuman will send him to the Pandavas. And the Pandavas, they'll send him to Vrindavan. And then Vrindavan, they'll find the gopis, who are actually the, the dearest servants of the Lord. So in this way, Sanatana Goswami, is describing this uh, essence of Srimad Bhagavatam. This book, Brihad Bhagavatam Rita, was written at the request of Parikshit's mother, Uttara. She had come to Parikshit Maharaj just before Parikshit Maharaj was to die. So Parikshit Maharaj had heard the Srimad Bhagavatam from Sukadeva Goswami. And after hearing it from Sukadeva Goswami, he was completely satisfied and he had no fear. He didn't have any fear of death or anything because he'd heard the whole Srimad Bhagavatam and he'd realized it also. So he was without fear. But at that time, his mother, Uttara, came and she requested him, please tell me the essence of what you heard from Shukadeva Goswami. So this is what we're hearing. Based on this, Sanatana Goswami wrote this book, Brihad Bhagavad Amrita, the nectar of the Bhagavad. Okay, Hare Krishna. To the Prabhupad ki ja. Go back to Brenda. Hare Krishna. So it's, uh, thank you for joining Nityam Bhavasana. Just wait for one minute for Darshan of the Lord. It is show. Jagannath Baldev Subdharmaya Ki Jai. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai.
Shila Prabhupada Ki Jai. This one is Bhakti Vigna Vinash Samaraj Ki Jai. Hare Krishna devotees. So we'll end the meeting now. See you tomorrow. Hare Krishna. Anatana Prabhupada. Vanchakal Kutarabhisa. Vasindabhita. Padidana Bhavanibhya. Vishnabhya. Vishnabhya.